smells so good. I'm not gonna eat it though. It's Easter Saturday today and I'm not gonna eat it. I can't eat it, not till Easter Sunday. It just shows what a dedicated Easterer I am. I am a very dedicated Easterer. Hello everyone, happy Easter. Today I'm going to be doing the Easter book tag because I looked around and I was like, there should be a book tag for Easter. I'm feeling in very Eastery vibes. I looked around and lo and behold, there was one. My problem was is that some of the questions I felt I didn't really apply. I didn't, I don't know. I just didn't really want to do them. One's like spring. It's not spring in Australia. And lambs. What? Anyway, so I'm going to be using part of the original tag created by Rosie the Reader. And I'll leave links to her original video down below. And partly just some added ones that I thought should be in there, which weren't there. Which I've now added, so now they are there. Easter book tag question number one. Rabbits. A book you wish would multiply. I thought about this book a lot and then finally I was like, hey, you know what a book that I really just wish there was more of? And that is Tales of Beetle the Bard by J.K. Rowling. There's only like three or four or five stories in that. I don't know, I don't have a copy with me. My sister owns a copy and that's obviously at home. And I've read all of those and I loved them. But I really wish there was more. Like, there's such amazingly cute, awesome little fairy tales that I'm like, hey, why don't we have more of these? I want to be less of a muggle and more of a wizard witch. Like, where is... I want... I want more Tales of Beetle the Bard. Like, is there like an addition to? I would read that. Question two, Easter eggs. Mmm, don't eat it. Is a book that surprised you? Um, for this I'm actually gonna have to go with Red Rising by Pierce Brown because it surprised me in a couple of ways. First, I wasn't actually expecting to like it very much. I kind of was like, eh, some of these more sci-fi off in the planets kind of thing is not much my thing. Like, I hadn't really read very much of that. And it kind of surprised me that I actually enjoyed that kind of sci-fi thing. And also just some of the ending plot twists. I was like, oh my gosh! So it kind of surprised me in a few ways. And yeah. So, Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Again, I don't have a copy with me. That's at home. And I still haven't worked out how to put pictures up here of what books look like. Hashtag editor in the making. Question three is Rising from the Dead, a book written by a dead author. For this one, I am I kind of tossed up between my bae Terry Pratchett, but I actually decided given I probably rant and I probably will continue to always be ranting about Terry Pratchett, maybe I would go with something different. So today I'm actually going to go with to Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I read this when I was a young kid with my mum. My mum read it to me as a read aloud and I absolutely loved it. And only a few years ago, actually, she released Ghost at a Watchman, which I yet haven't read. And then she kind of kicked the bucket, which I was a little bit sad about. What am I saying? I was a lot sad about that. But I'm glad at least we kind of got a second book out of her because she kind of wrote to Kill a Mockingbird, and then waiting, 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 finally then we got Go Set a Watchman. So I'm so happy that we, you know, actually got a second book out of her. And I would happily read To Kill a Mockingbird again, and then go read Go Set a Watchman, despite that I think they have incredibly different timelines, but I still think they're about the same characters. I really don't know. Anyway, if you haven't read To Kill a Mockingbird, read it. I mean, you might read it with school, but my mum and I read it together, and I absolutely loved it. Question four is Basket. A book that has been on your wish list for a while. This I'm actually going to go with An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. Tahir? Please correct me if I'm pronouncing this wrong. I probably am. And I would like to be able to pronounce her name correctly. Anyway, An Ember in the Ashes. I just got this from the library and it actually isn't on my TBR, but I have started it anyhow and I'm loving it. And none of my other books are here that are on my TBR, so... My TBR is now changing to this book. Yeah, this book has been on my TBR for ages, and I've been trying to, like, I've been wanting to read it for ages and ages, and I know I still don't technically now own a copy, given this is the libraries, but I have been wanting to get my hands on this book for ages, and it is not, it is not disappointing me. This is really good. I'm really loving it. Now onto a few questions which I have made up. Question five, one that I have made up, and that is sacrifice, character or book where someone sacrifices themselves for everyone else. Which I'm actually going with is, I know now I am going to Terry Pratchett, is Men at Arms by Terry Pratchett. 
book is so good and the ending almost made me cry. I don't actually cry in books, but it was such a beautiful book and it's one of my favourite Tory Pratchett's. It is flaming hilarious, literally you almost wet your pants, it's hilarious. Um, incredibly well written. Terry Pratchett was knighted for his ability to write, so he's good at it. And the story is incredibly engaging, and some of the, the sacrifices that happened at the end had me very sad. Read it if you haven't, it's very good. Not saying anything, just read it, okay? Question six, again made up by me, Betrayed Like a Judas. Pick a book where the characters are utterly betrayed and I'm not gonna, I was originally gonna say pick a character but that would obviously be an incredible spoiler if someone hasn't read the book and then they're like oh so you're the betrayer, you're Judas, I see it now, yes I can see through everything so we'll just say book, eh? The book I'm going with is, I feel like it's probably gonna be a bit of a cliche and that is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I kind of I didn't really want to go with this, but then I was like, actually, yeah, you know, that betrayal, that betrayal had me fairly mad. I, had, I was, I was fairly mad about that. I'm not quite sure whether I saw it coming. I don't even remember anymore. But like, Red Queen wasn't a book which I was jumping up and down about. But it was, it was a little, it was engaging. It was a very fast read I, for me. I think I felt it was a little bit, the language was a little bit simpler. But the, the betrayal definitely had me going, hey, that's not very nice. We don't do that to friends. So, yeah. Hot crust buns. Mmm, actually this one's currently frozen. <laughs> I love some frozen hot crust bun. Wait, no, I don't. And I'm all sticky. Yeah. And seven also made up by Moi, and that is hot crust buns. Do you just not have hot crust buns in America or something? Because my American sister-in-law is like, oh, uh, we didn't really do hot crust buns in my house. Maybe that was just her house. I don't know. Please, if you're from America and you do hot cross buns, please, like, tell me in the comments below. I would love to know. Is it just something we do in, like, Australia and maybe, like, Europe or something? I don't know. Anyway, a book which you cannot wait to read as soon as it's out of the oven. By that I mean out of the publishing stores. By that I mean in the bookstores. By that I mean in your hand and in your head and then reading thing. Yeah. That. For me, most definitely, my most anticipated book that is being released soon is The Empty Grave by Jonathan Stroud which is the wrap-up to the Lockwood & Co series. I cannot wait for this book, which is coming out in September. I am like, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Like, that's me. I am, like, so pumped for this. So, yeah, that is my book, which I cannot wait to eat as soon as it is done. Like, ready? Yeah, I, I want to eat that. Eating books. <laughs> there should be a chocolate book. I would eat it. Final question, which I didn't make up, this is back to Rosie the Reader's questions, and that is peeps. Tag some peepsels. <laughs> peepsels. <laughs> For this, I'm going to be tagging Pintair from Book Roast. I really hope I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm sorry, I haven't actually heard your name spoken, but yeah. So, Book Roast channel, and also Beautiful Pages. I don't know what her first name is. If I find out, I'll put it on the screen or something. Hers is a fairly new channel, but she's really sweet, and yeah. I tag you guys to do this. It is Easter. Get in your Easter vibes. Eat your, eat your chocolate, eat your hot cross buns, and get partying. Do people party at Easter? I don't know. Maybe I'm just happy. It's like chocolate and, and chocolate. Continuing to support Red My Lips, please check out the links below to follow that because let's stop rape and sexual assault because it's not cool. It's not cool guys and it's not the victim's fault so let's stop that in its tracks from happening. And I'm supporting that this month because it is sexual assault awareness month by wearing red lipstick. So support too. All of those kind of nice fun funky things. Raise awareness. Let's go. Yeah. Do you eat hot cross buns? And if so, what are your favourite? Are you like a hardcore fruit Bread Sultana hot cross bun eater? Are you a chocolate hot cross bun eater? Or are you one of those crazy people that have the travesty of the plain hot cross bun without mixed in fruit or chocolate? I'm not judging. I mean, like, there's got to be someone to eat those plain hot cross buns, doesn't there? Thank you so much for watching. Please comment down below with what sort of hot cross bun you eat, or if you eat hot cross buns, or what is your favourite part of Easter. 
or any other bookish things you feel like talking about because I like books, okay? Funny. I'll see you next time. Bye!